what I have here on the left hand side is a real candle and it's burning with the sort of randomness that you only get out there in the real world uh, and it's been picked up the light has been picked up I should say by a light dependent resistor which is in a voltage divider with this 10k pot so I can adjust for sensitivity signal is being fed to an analog input on an Arduino Uno and then uh, it is outputted as a PWM signal uh, to just a standard yellow LED and here we've got a 220 ohm uh, current limiting resistor. So um, this uh, sketch in here is pretty much a standard one. I don't think I've changed any. Oh, I've have changed a little bit of the mapping from one to the other. Um, but it's basically the same sketch that you'll see in the examples folder uh, that comes with the Arduino IDE. And uh, if I just turn the main light off so we can just see how that's working. So you can see that if the, as the light changes in a fairly random way on the left hand side, it's reflected on the, uh, on the right hand side. I'll just blow on that. Yeah, so you can see that the sputtering of it, I guess you can use my hand to wave that around. Yeah, so you can adjust the sensitivity of that so it, it um, it's uh, better reflected. But basically what's happening is that we're just getting a transference from one to the other. Now that's a lot of data. I think it's picking it up about every two milliseconds. And uh, what I'd really like to do is to capture that data um, along the way. Now it's difficult to capture through the Arduino Uno because of the memory constraints. So I'm really looking for something which enables me to capture that and to analyze that data and perhaps use it to do a better candle on the uh, on the other side of that process. One solution to the data storage problem with Arduino are these 4 meg Winbond data flash uh, chips. So, and um, uh, David Johnson Davies on his Technoblogy site uh, back in 2019 uh, posted these uh, lovely little boards, um, or at least the instructions for these boards, and um, yeah, it's got the chip, which is um, four megabytes, and then it's got some uh, some capacitors, some resistors, some diodes, and a three point three voltage regulator. And he's, uh, he's written some clever software which enables you to erase, read and write. So my uh, plan at this stage is to solder all this up, might even use the oven for that. And then what we'll do is we will uh, capture that data from the flame and, uh, and then uh, read it back and see if that's a way to store big amounts of data, whether it be things like temperature and humidity, uh, music, text, uh, or in this case, values uh, read from a uh, light-dependent resistor hooked up to a uh, yeah to a real flame. So uh, let's get these all um, soldered up, and then we will um, yeah we'll see if it works. All right, we just might do one to start with to um, see if this process is going to work. I think the first time I did this, and I can't find the original one that I made, which is a bit of a bummer, but I think the first time I did this, I actually soldered them. So that was weird. So uh, let's put some components on there and, uh, and heat it up. All right, so um, yeah, mountains of uh, solder paste there. Um, and uh, we'll just run it through the oven, I guess, and and see if that's going to work. Otherwise, we'll go back to the old tried and true. Well, not not true, but certainly tried method. Uh, and I do have a successful one sitting around here somewhere, uh, which is to hand solder it. But uh, yeah, let's run it up to speed and see what happens. Okay, just ramping it up there. Let's go to the two twenty mark, two twenty two thirty. Let's see what it looks like. 
uh, yeah, without a stencil in a word, awful. So um, I might get the hot air gun out and um, and the soldering iron. <laughs> oh, what a mess. Anyway, uh, we'll give it a whirl, clean it up, and then um, put those headers on and see if we can at least talk to it. Uh, the hot air gun, which you can see, you can hear cooling down in the background, uh, has done a wonderful job of cleaning that up. Whether anything has survived or not, hard to say. I'm going to put some header pins on it, plug it into the Arduino, and we'll see what happens. Here's the code that David Johnson Davies provides. It includes all of those routines to write and read the uh, flash uh, chip. And down the bottom, a little test program here, which basically just uh, sets up the chip, erases it, uh, writes to it, reads it back, and just checks if there's any errors. So the first thing to do is to try and see if this chip is recognized. So I'm rebooting. And yeah, data flash not found. That's not good. All right, back to the drawing board, and we'll see if we can find what's wrong with it. Let's not call that an oven failure. Uh, let's call it a, the application of solder paste failure, I think, at this stage. So I'm going to go back to soldering this up by hand. And um, we might do this on a uh, time lapse. And uh, we'll solder another one up and, uh, and see how it goes. Okay, so uh, let's just grab all those components out first. And... Uh, there's a lot of very small SMDs. I think if I was designing this one, I probably would have made those a little larger. So the board's obviously got to fit into a certain space width-wise because that's the nature of the Arduino Uno. But maybe lengthwise, and some of those 8050s might have been better as uh, 1206s. So, um, yeah, quite small. So I'm just tacking them on one side and uh, and then affixing them the other. So this is just the uh, resistors and uh, it looks like that's the voltage regulator going in there. Let's have a look close up and see what we can see. Uh, so, in fact, that is the diodes and the voltage regulator. So, everything looking good at this stage. Let's continue on. I'll change the angle a bit slightly there, so we're not looking at my hair so much. It's a little distracting. And uh, this is now just tacking on those resistors. And a couple of capacitors. There's the chip there, just checking the orientation. And once you've got one leg tacked in, it's just a matter of uh, putting the others in. So there's a final thing. It's it's way prettier than the oven-based version. And uh, it, uh, it looks like it could be fine. Unfortunately, plugging it in, uh, no data flash. So here's the problem. Um, side by side, the board on the left-hand side uh, doesn't work and the one on the right hand side does. Some of it's got to do with the actual uh, wind bond chip itself, uh, some of which are faulty and some of which aren't. Then there's the voltage regulator. These diodes in the end, this is the strangest one, I just ended up taking them out uh, entirely. So the one on the right uh, it goes resistors straight to the in-out connections and uh, well let's see how it works. All right, so I've made a couple of changes. Uh, changed out the voltage regulator, which seemed to be dodgy. It needs to be providing 3.3 volts on one of the pins there, and it wasn't. Uh, changed out the uh, the actual flash chip itself, which yeah, they seem to be a variable quality, and also taken out all of the diodes. So the first thing to do is to check to see whether or not that is recognised. So we'll just go to reboot, and uh, that's positive. So it's erasing the chip. And it's 4,000 records that it's writing to it at the moment. So it's writing them, reading them, and zero errors. Terrific. All right, so now we can continue 
and uh, try and capture some data from the candle to uh, to write onto that chip. Fantastic. So we're collecting data at the moment. The button pin is high, so that uh, triggers the data collection. Candle's on the right hand side. LDR is uh, pointing towards it there on the breadboard. And, uh, and then on the Arduino, you can see the data flash board is, uh, is plugged in. And uh, yeah, you can set the parameters, but this one's collecting for uh, quite a few seconds. And then it will uh, store it and then we'll play it back. That's our Arduino Uno with the data flash board sitting on top. 4 megabytes and uh, some of it is filled with the random measurements of the uh, light intensity coming out of an actual candle. And uh, then I have pulled that uh, indicator button low, which means that when I uh, give it some power, uh, then what will happen is the, uh, the it'll go into uh, read mode and it'll pull that data off and uh, push it out as PWN to that uh, LED off to the side. So let's do that. Give it some power. Yep, and there we go. A little hard to see the randomness in this light, so I'll just switch over to uh, much darker. It may even uh, put the old table tennis ball on the top for full effect. Yeah, it's a pretty nice light. Probably didn't anticipate actually just how volatile that light is compared to my simulation. So I may have to have a closer look at those uh, simulations and that code. But you can clearly see uh, what a great candle that is because that's a mirror of an actual candle itself. Yeah, that's that's really nice. And such a nice board too that uh, David Johnson Davis has built. So that's the circuit working for this week. We will see you next time.